Hey everyone, welcome to another Top 10 list. Welcome to my Top 10 Favorite Conservative Movies. I did Liberal, now it's time for Conservative. Interesting, I know. Uh, these movies, again, are big movies now. Uh, some of these movies you might not have thought, hey, they're conservative movies. <laughs> they are. They are rooted in a lot of conservative politics and stuff. That doesn't mean they're just like only for conservatives or right wings. It doesn't mean just because a movie has conservative politics. It doesn't mean you can't watch them or anything. So I hope people don't take it too personally. I have to really stress that out because I know a lot of people are very anti-conservative right now. Especially now with the way media is going and all. But these movies are all great. They have conservative politics in it. But they're still all very great films. And very well known films too. For most of them. So let's get to it. Here are my top 10 favorite conservative movies. Number 10, Blast from the Past. Great romantic comedy with Brendan Fraser and Alicia Silverstone, Christopher Walken, and Sissy Spacek. Love this movie. It's so great. Super underrated. The movie is literally about this husband and wife, and the wife's pregnant, and they trap themselves in a bomb shelter, and they live in the bomb shelter for like 35 years, and then their son Adam has to go up uh and to society now and basically find food supplies and a wife and stuff uh very uh, a lot of hints of religion in the movie uh the main guy's name is adam the main girl her name is eve and it's about them coming back into society almost like a jesus christ kind of thing uh the movie also talks a lot of smack about feminism because eve in the movie is a feminist and very pro-woman and doesn't need a man but then when she finds Adam, she finds a man and a great man with old school beliefs because he was raised by, raised by a family with old school beliefs and they fall in love. <laughs> the movie talks a lot about anti-communism and all that stuff too, but the movie is a very straightforward conservative movie. It feels like a movie that was made in the 1950s and it's just delightful to watch. And I know not, not everyone's a big fan of it. They find it a little corny and stuff. I love it. I think it's great and I always enjoy watching it. Number nine shockingest one, probably the most shocking one, is Juno. Juno is a conservative movie. And I know that's a little weird to say because it was written by a liberal and it stars liberals. Uh, <laughs> it's a pro-life movie. That's why it's very conservative, believe, because the entire film is a pro-life film. The movie is about a, a girl, a teenage girl, who got knocked up as a teenager and she keeps the baby and gives the baby up for adoption just so that she can make a family happy. That's actually the most selfless thing a person can do. It's very it's very nice. And this movie is a very funny movie, and it's one of the best Jason Reitman movies next to the Up in the Air and stuff. But the movie is very conservative in a lot of ways. Like, even though, again, has a lot of liberal stars and everything, and it stars, well, Elliot Page now, at the time, it was Ellen Page, who gives a very good performance in the movie. Uh, the movie could have been easily just about a girl wanting to get an abortion, because that's what people do now, that's what everybody does now, but the movie's actually about life, and about she doesn't want to kill life, she wants to have the baby and give it to a family who will raise the baby properly, and the movie talks about it in a very adult way, and everyone who judges her and thinks she's a freak for doing it, she stands up for what she believes in, and wants to do what's right, and honestly, very good of her and very conservative actually <laughs> i know the i think diablo cody, Diab, diablo cody was probably not going in that way but it went that way <laughs> juno good movie number eight braveheart braveheart is a very conservative movie because it's directed and starred uh, mel gibson who is a conservative we all know who's a conservative and very high religious the movie's a lot about religion the movie is about the man uh, about a man's freedom and it's very anti-establishment especially the people who are taking over this time were you know kind of liberal leading in a way so uh the movie is a tough rugged man's man movie very bloody and violent and mel gibson put conservative politics throughout the film as well so uh great movie though it's not loaded with it but there is stuff in there uh, but it's still amazing, and it's probably one of Mel Gibson's best films. It's fantastic. Number seven is Master and Commander, Far Side of the World. Underrated, pure weird film. It's during the French Revolution and everything. Um, 
A.O. Scott from the New, York, the New York Times actually called this movie a profoundly conservative film. The movie, when it came out, was very divisive because it people called it a very conservative film. Because uh, the movie is a lot about the working class man and how a man knows his place in society and should stay like that. Very capitalist. <laughs> and the movie shows every character doing the right thing, even though it might not always be the right thing, without spoiling the film. But it's about the working class man, the blue collar workers on this ship and everything. Very conservative. <laughs> Great film, though. Very slow moving, very atmospheric. Fantastic film, though. Number six, The Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Written by C.S. Lewis, another religious conservative. Uh, the movie is a lot all about religion and everything. The movie is literally a metaphor for heaven. Uh, Aslan's a metaphor for God, and uh, all the kids are the descendants of Adam and Eve, the sons and daughters of Adam and Eve and everything. They even have Father Christmas and all this stuff. Super tons of religious undertones, especially if you read all the novels, a lot of religion in the books. And I know some people might just watch an early thing. It's a fun fantasy adventure film, but it is a very extreme religious film. Uh, it's a religious franchise, and it's very good, though. I've read a lot of the books. The books get very weird, very interesting, very weird, but... Love Narnia, love the first two films. Third one's okay, but the first two were really great. I really want them to keep going. I heard they're going to keep going. They're going to make it like a reboot or something. I'm excited for that. That's cool. But yeah, Narnia, very conservative. Number five, and uh, no shocker there, is American Underdog, one of my favorite films of last year. Uh, why is it conservative? Well, it's uh, about a conservative football, football player. <laughs> and it's directed by the Irwin brothers, who are very religious and stuff. The movie talks a lot about religion, and it talks about a working class man trying to better his family and, you know, with the help of his uh, wife and God and everything. A lot of religion. I know we live in a society now where it's very anti-religion right now. Nothing wrong with some religion. Nothing all wrong with that. But American Outdraw is not a straight, like, full-on conservative film, but it's made by conservatives. It's literally about a conservative football player. They don't really talk about it in the film, but there are a lot of hints in it, so... Yeah, still a great film, though. Uh, number four is Gattaca. Gattaca is a phenomenal, phenomenal film. Andrew Nichol is... I don't know what he's been doing lately. Like, I, I enjoyed In Time. I think In Time is a very underrated film, but he's just never made the quality like he did with Gattaca. Gattaca is such a smart, brilliant film. Uh, Ethan Hawke, Uma Thurman, Jude Law, all fantastic. The entire movie is about our future and how all humans are genetically engineered to be their best and perfect. You can make them whatever you want and stuff. Whatever. You can fix whatever and be whatever and everything. That's almost in a way where our society is going right now. And But it's also talking about the main stories about the evils of that. And if you're not part of this genetic engineering, you can't do things right now. You can't do anything. You are the lower form of society, lower form of a human being. Oh, it's kind of like now they're doing vaccinations. But uh, <laughs> the movie is very much like kind of against the gen genetic engineering and not about like, oh, you can just be whatever and do whatever. It's a lot, a very conservative film, actually. And how about society is going that way, but it's very dangerous that it's going that way. And it's actually a lot of truth to that in some matter of speaking. Uh, I don't want to go into too much details, but just watch the movie. It's fucking fantastic. Really good movie. Number three. Number three. <laughs> not, people will not like this answer. The Incredibles. Incredibles is a very conservative film. The movie is a family movie about a blue-collar, hard-working father trying to work and better his life for him and his family. The movie uh, has a stay-at-home mom. It has kids. Very pro kids, very pro family. The movie even has some uh, some conservative lines, like the mom saying that everybody's special, and Dash mutters, "If everybody's special, then nobody's special." That's actually a conservative talking point, actually. So, the movie in itself is very conservative. The sequel, on the other hand, is more liberal. But the movie has strong female characters, but also has strong male characters. But it focuses on mainly the father, a hardworking blue collar father trying to help and support his family 
Fantastic film. One of my favorite Pixar films. Really good. Number two, Arrival. Arrival is, strange enough, a conservative film. Uh, Denis Villeneuve is a, is a phenomenal filmmaker. He himself, I think, has even said that he's more liberal than conservative. But the movie itself comes off conservative because it's Hawk's interesting ideals about science and human nature but it never talks about like anti-religion and stuff which you would think a movie like this would and the movie also has a very strong pro-life message about amy Adams' character knowing she is going to have a child and she knows the child is going to die and she still has the child anyways because she knows that it's her destiny. She knows that she still wants to be a loving mother to this child. Because a lot of uh, people get an abortion because they don't want the child to die or they don't want them to be like deformed or anything like that. So they just won't go through with the birth. So in any normal movie, the mother wouldn't go through with it, especially in, like, in a left-wing liberal movie. But she still goes through with it. And it's actually one of the biggest pro-life messages I've ever seen. So that's very fascinating like that the movie has liberal it's more of like a centrist movie but it does have deep-rooted conservative politics and i don't think it ever meant to but it does still a fantastic movie and still one of my favorite denis villeneuve movies number one is ghostbusters everyone actually knows this one though it's about blue collar hardworking man and it's about the ronald reagan era the reagan era everyone knows about the reagan era and the movie talks a lot about the reagan era and it's very pro ronald reagan a one of the best and well-known Republicans out there. It's about starting your own business. It's a, it's a very pro-business, blue-collar worker, hard-working men. Very conservative film. A lot of people have ever... A lot of people, when they talk about conservative mainstream films, everyone talks about Ghostbusters, so no shocker there. It's Ghostbusters is the best. So yeah, that was my top 10 favorite conservative films. In the comments section below, please tell me what are your guys' top 10 favorite conservative films. And if you don't want to talk about that, just... Say what's up. What's up? <laughs> Comment below. Let me know. And as always, if you like this video, please subscribe to this channel and join the dark side.